The Arizona Corporation Commission offers the first official step in forming a business in Arizona. You, the entrepreneur, are the most important step to inspire your dream. Pleased to be joined today by Jimmy Walker. Thank you for being on the show. It's a pleasure to be here, Tom. Jimmy, take me back to the beginning. How did you know you were an entrepreneur? Well, <laughs> the beginning. Uh, the beginning would be, I, as a young kid, I wanted to be a professional basketball player. And I went to high school here in Phoenix, and then I had a few scholarships, not many, but I chose Arizona State University. And ironically, I chose ASU because I was thinking as an entrepreneur at that time because when I was young, even in college, I was selling life insurance. And I thought if I went to ASU locally in Phoenix, where I went to high school at Central High, I would keep my contacts right here. So as a businessman, even in college, I thought that would make sense. So I did go to ASU and I played basketball there, but please don't check my Google on my basketball success. I'm very mediocre at that, but uh, I was thinking as an entrepreneur when I was very young. Are you a competitive person? I would guess so. I would guess so. Yeah, I like to compete. And uh, it's, uh, but you know, the competition, it's, it's this guy. I try to compete with myself. I don't try to really compete with other people. I just say I have a certain amount of ability and I want to live up to it, to the potential, whatever I do have, whatever gift I do have. So how does someone become successful in the insurance business? Well, I think, first of all, uh, in any business you're in, whether it's real estate or stocks or wealth management, success is really about the other person. You need to meet their needs and think of their objectives and, and what is important for them. And I think if, if one tries to measure success financial on how much money I can earn or what the commission is, I, I think they're uh, geared for failure. And I think that the, the character and the integrity of that person is going to lack. I, I want to talk a little bit more about relationships because I think this is so key. One, one piece of advice I got a long time ago was go golfing with some rich dudes and find out what they need and help them. Mm -hmm. Could you build on that a little bit? If somebody is starting from the bottom and they need to meet the right people, the right person, how do we... What advice do we have for them? Well, you know, when you mentioned the golfing, it made me think of Mark McCormick. And Mark was the really creator of sports marketing. And he said he'd like to golf with someone before he did business. Because he said in five minutes he could size them up whether or not he really wanted to work with them. Now, I think that's shifting into their character and their uh, mannerisms and so forth. But, but I think in terms of uh, m moving, you know, the needle forward, I, I think... Uh, it's really back to relationships. It's back, it's back to having a commitment to what you really believe in, if it's a product. And I think in, in choosing who you want to work with as an entrepreneur, I think you have to ask yourself, is that who I really want to work with? But then again, I, I think on the community side, there's so many important areas in life where we want to help people that, that, that have uh, had a lot of failures. Because I know I've had failure in my life. Most successful people have failed. but we can grow from it. One of the early giants in my life insurance business was a man named Ben Feldman. And he was not an attractive guy. He was overweight. He had a lisp of it. He led for 20 years the life insurance industry selling over 100 million of life insurance. And Ben said a fool learns from experience, but the wise man learns from experience of others. So I think we can learn a lot through other people's mistakes, but certainly through our own as well. What's interesting to me as well uh, is that all of this, the final product is that you're mm -hmm. taking care of the poor, that you're feeding the poor. That's your, you're using these relationships and the outcome is uh, really uh, full of humanity. How often does that come up? What's the transition when you're talking to very famous friends uh, and taking it towards that direction? Well, you're speaking of the poor, and I think that uh, God praises the humble but looks down upon the proud, and there's a lot of scripture on helping the poor. I think Mother Teresa, back to being an example, she said so many times, don't judge or you can't help the poor, you can't have an opportunity to love people. So it was about 10 years ago I started this thing called uh, Never Give Up. It actually started as a Bible study. 
and there were about five or six people, ten people, and it was with St. Vincent de Paul, which is in our inner city for the homeless. And after five or six months of doing the Bible study, I mentioned to the executive director, Steve Zabelski, I said, what if we change the name to Never Give Up? And what I'd like to do, Steve, is to get people, businessmen, women, men, and some of them celebrities, some successful, some maybe not, to come down and give a message and never give up. And we now have had over 300 speakers that have spoken to the homeless at St. Vincent de Paul. And I go down there every Monday. My car, it's on autopilot, just goes down if I'm in town. I get more out of it than I'm sure that I give to them, but it's been a real encouragement. I, I may have more friends on the inner city than I do in Paradise Valley, for all I know. I, I, but there's some really wonderful people that have had very difficult times. And you know, when you see these children sometimes that are homeless, they're out in the street at age six, seven, and eight, and they just had a lot of tough breaks in their life. And a lot of these people really, you know, the biggest room in the world is a room for improvement. And they need encouragement. Back to Larry Fitzgerald, I introduced Larry to the idea. He's been down there five times, brings friends. And again, the subject is never give up. And then we give them opportunity after uh, the guest speaker will speak 10 or 15 minutes and I'll speak five minutes. And then the general manager, Jerry Castro, will give the homeless five or 600 of them that are having breakfast an opportunity where if they have an addiction to maybe cocaine or heroin or pornography or shoplifting that they can go to meetings. So we provide that for them. So we just try to, you know, it's, it's just fun. It's, it's the most enjoyable meeting I have of the week, by the way, with the homeless every Monday morning. And Jimmy, what I love that you pointed out and you've articulated it so well is the difference between how the world may view success and what real happiness is. And I've met so many people who think that fame is happiness. And right. fame can be a real tool right. to use. Right. But as you're just describing these visits down to the shelter, I, and from my own experience, that's really where purpose and happiness come from. And I'm glad you shared that. I think there's a difference between happiness and joy. To me, happiness is based on circumstances. We can all be happy if things are going well. But to have that joy, just the gratitude, to be thankful for the many blessings that we have, I think that's where we get uh, life at its very best. Oh man, I love that. Okay, you're a very persistent person. Why are you so persistent? And why is persistence so key to success? Well, first of all, I'm, I every day work on my PhD degree patience, humility, and discipline. And uh, I just, I don't know if I'm persistent. I guess I am. I, uh, I just, you know, I mean, I get up early, early in the morning because I don't want to miss out on anything. I just, I don't know, I'm kind of engaged in what I'm doing. Were you always like that? Yes, I think so. I mean, when I played basketball, I wasn't the most athletic. I couldn't, I wasn't the fastest, but I always dove for the loose ball. I would dive for balls. Oh, I love that. And I think in life, I think we got to die for loose balls. I think there's a lot of opportunity out there. And sometimes I'm mistaken for being wealthy or high net worth, which I am not. But I work with wealthy people because in the life insurance business, a niche I have with my New York partner is we sell product, help people own product to create liquidity to meet their state tax obligations. So you're talking about wealthy people and the celebrities. I mean, the celebrities, I know most of them, uh, a lot of them are very, very empty. They have a lot of voids in their life. And, and we've seen two celebrities commit suicide just recently. I mean, sometimes the bigger the mouth, the bigger the vacuum. But, uh, and I've seen both sides, back to Larry Fitzgerald, back to, I think Michael Jordan's handled his success really well. And uh, so, you know, the persistency is, I think commitment is what you really, what your goal is and what you believe in. And I think passion is a key word for persistency. You have to have a passion for what you're doing. You have to, and it takes the word work out of it. I think uh, Harvey McKay at age 86, what he's doing, writing columns, writing books, and speaking around the country at his age, and, or, or Tony Bennett at age 90, he must be pretty persistent, but he has a passion for what he's doing, I think. And, and if you're down in the dumps and if you're in the gutter, if you're listening to this, you can have a passion for hope that it's not going to be this way all the time. You might be right at a turning point in your life where victory is right around the corner, but just don't give up. Just keep moving forward. Tell me about the beginning of Fight Night. 1994, I called Charles Barkley with the Phoenix Suns. He practically owned our city. 
I said, Charles, why don't you put on big gloves and fight Michael Carbajal, who's a great young boxer, in the ballroom at Ritz Carlton. Charles said, definitely, it's on. So then I got a hold of Marley, and then I got a hold of Phil Mickelson, and the gloves were oversized. It was all in comedy, and we would do it to raise money for charity. And then I got a hold of Tommy Lasorda, and I got a hold of Sugar Ray Leonard, and I got a hold of Evander Holyfield, and then I got a hold of Joe Montana. We did this for about three years, and we raised money for charity. And then back to when I met Muhammad Ali, I thought, okay, we're calling this event Fight Night. And I'd met Muhammad Ali actually earlier in the early 80s, and now we're in about 1996 or so. So I reconnected with Muhammad and talked about this charity event. And I said, we could raise money and we can make a difference for Parkinson's disease. So that was the beginning, how it happened. So we went from oversized boxing gloves to entertainment. And then we started bringing in entertainers. And I met David Foster, who is a 16-time Grammy winner. And I mean, we've had, uh, today, David's done our event 18 years in a row. Reba McIntyre MCs it every year. And um, we uh, are doing it internationally. We're in Italy now with Andre Bocelli, which we do in September. And the Phoenix event, we have its 25th year. And the lead beneficiary is the Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center at Barrow, where I've been on the board. Bringing together all of these amazing people, having so much fun and so much laughter and raising money for these charities. I mean, it's a beautiful model that you've put together here. Why have you done it in Arizona? Well, I live here in Arizona, but first of all, I get too much credit for this. I've got good people around me. You have to have good people around me. Lonnie Ali has helped a lot. Muhammad, our executive director, Sean Curry, and just volunteers. We must have 75, 80 volunteers. And, and uh, so, you know, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of people really want to help. They just don't know how to go about it. I mean, when I ask people to come down to speak at St. Vincent de Paul to the homeless, hardly any of them have ever done anything like that, but they're just overwhelmed by it. They love it, and, but they're very nervous doing it. And I said, these are the most forgiving, kindest people you ever meet in your life. These are real people. Uh, if you had one piece of advice to give someone that's getting started in business, what would it be? Well, in answering it bluntly, candidly, um, I think faith is number one. I think everybody's got to have a strong foundation. And I think the success from the biblical standpoint is, is having a joy and a peace about yourself. It's not the material things. It's not where your office is located or if you've got the biggest home in Phoenix or if you have the finest clothes. It's about the joy, the peace that you have in your life. Tell me about the memorabilia you have around here. Well, first of all, it doesn't seem very humbling. I have all this memorabilia, but it's just the energy. It's just, it's just kind of, I don't know. Do you have favorite pieces? Well, my favorite pieces are my grandchildren. You know, the memorabilia here, you know, when I, when I look around here, it, uh, I don't know, it's just fun. It's just enjoyable. These are all people, frankly, that have all failed. If I were to sit down with each one of them, they would tell me a story where they have failed, they have struggled, they have shortcomings, uh, they have weaknesses. But guess what? We all have a strength. We all have a gift. And I think the important thing, Tom, is that we uh, accelerate our gifts and, and not work so much on beating ourselves up with guilt, but to say, you know, hey, I'm going forward. And I think that's the key. You are a force for good, and you do a tremendous amount for our community, and I, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do, and appreciate you doing our show. Today. Thank you, Tom. I've enjoyed this very much. You've asked great questions. Thank you. Special thanks to our guest today, Jimmy Walker. Create your business entity by filing with us to create a corporation, nonprofit, or LLC. Visit ecorp.azcc.gov to learn more.